Hello. Welcome to this webinar about adipose-derived stem cell research in Costa Rica. My name is Johan Morales, and I'll be presenting along my research partner, Silvia Castro. We both are biotechnology engineers graduated from the Costa Rican Institute of Technology. And my partner is also a master's degree in microbiology from the University of Costa Rica. Thank you for using some of your time and being with us today. I hope you all can enjoy learning about research and skin regeneration in our country. As I told you before, we are talking about ongoing stem cell research in Costa Rica. But do you know where our country is located? First of all, it's not an island. That's Puerto Rico. Costa Rica is in the American continent is a small strip of land located right in the middle, in Central America. We have a population of 5 million people and barely over 51,000 square kilometers. However, our country has an outstanding universal healthcare system and a free education system with five major public universities, where 55% of investigation and research is developed. That's why even if we are a small country, we have the potential to make research in areas such as tissue engineering and regenerative medicine. In our case, we work at the Costa Rican Institute of Technology. We we'll call this university TECH for short. This university, TECH, was founded in 1971 and had a main focus in engineering careers. The Faculty of Biology started to work in 1992, and in 1994, the Biotechnology Research Center started to work in plant biotechnology. It was until 2005 that the Tissue Engineering Laboratory was born, aiming to develop novel technologies using cell culture to treat skin lesions. And that's the laboratory where my partner and I work until this day. At this lab, we have three research topics. Bioactivity, 3D cell culture models, and tissue engineering for regenerative medicine. We are a total of seven faculty members and around 20 students that work alongside, alongside other research groups from tech, other universities in Costa Rica, and collaborators from around all the world. We have more than 12 running projects that involve neurosciences, 3D models of skin, muscle, and bone, evaluation of new biomaterials, cancer research, and biological analysis to extract from endemic plants. Also, we have worked with both epithelial and adipose-derived stem cells for skin regeneration. In previous research, we have used two different approaches for skin regeneration using tissue engineering. We isolated cells both from skin and fat tissues from rats in order to culture epidermal stem cells and adipose-derived stem cells. After two weeks of treatment in a rodent model of full thickness skin injury, both treatments showed no significant differences at the microscopic level. However, the regeneration process was successful. To make sure we were using the correct cells, epidermal stem cells were characterized by analyzing the expression of cytokeratin stem 14 and 15. On the other hand, adipose-derived stem cells were isolated and identified by using CD29, CD73, CD90, CD105, and CD45 markers. Interestingly, adipose-derived stem cells through the group showed more vascularization and a better collagen fiber organization compared with the other groups. That is why we continued our research focus mainly in adipose-derived stem cells. Right now, my partner Sylvia is going to show you some of the res most research most recent research we have done. 
Okay. Although uh, fibroblast and keratinocyte therapy was as successful and even we could treat some patients in the past with our, with our research, at that time we need something more feasible to look uh, for a lower cost and effective option. So from, one, from 2015 we decided to investigate the potential of adipose stem cells for skin cell therapy. In the first stage, we established the protocol for stem cell isolation from a mouse inguinal path adipose tissue. Initially, we tried to make in a pool of inbred mice, and the cultures were not successful. So, we decided to carry out the protocol from a single mouse at a time. These cultures were extended and subcultured to perform different tests with a slightly more homogeneous population. Growth curves were performed, PDT was determined, and cell surface markers were analyzed at a low passage. We want to look for the presence of adipose stem cells in the initial population, and subsequently the differentiation potential. So, after several modifications and adjustments to the protocol, less than 200,000 nucleated cells were counted for each processed tissue. When seeded, they first form a microcolony-like shape with a spindle-shaped morphology and reach complete after 10 and 14 days in culture. We were able to maintain up to five passages. Afterwards, the cells enter in a senescent state, as we can see in the E, e picture. Very similar lock phases were obtained in the first passages. As the number of the passages got higher, the exponential phase slightly increased. Finally, a stationary phase was reached near 300 thousand cells per well or 60,000 cells per centimeter got the inhibition contact in all cases. The population double time was maintained between 35 and 39 hours with established incubation conditions. There was a significant difference between passage 1 and passage 2 uh, cells, as well as passage 1 and between passage 3 cells. It was expected because all the adaptation periods that the cells need to develop in vitro conditions. As mentioned before, passage 1 population was analyzed for stem cell marker expression, as known in the figure, it can be seen that close to the 30% of the cells expressed CD73 and CD90 marker, and approximately 40% of the analysis population was CD105 positive, and only 3% of the population expressed C45, which means that only these cells come from hematopoietic lineage. Even though it is a small proportion of the whole population, they will increase in number and, in, and the whole population will become more homogeneous as the subcultures are carried out. In this figure 5, uh, in the immunofluorescence of passage 3 cells after 21 in culture uh, with the respective differentiation media, the cells were able to differentiate in the three lineages. For the adipogenic differentiation, the fatty acid binding protein could be detected. In the other hand, for the chondrogenic differentiation, type 2 collagen was used for analysis. And for the osteogenic differentiation, we couldn't notice osteopontin a bone specific protein that it is commonly used. Besides the immune staining of those markers, a morphological change could be noted. For the last part of this research, 
We also used healthy male adult biopsy mice. Animals were closely monitored before, during, and after the experiment. To create the model, we anesthetized the animals and made a small surgery in the interscapular area by removing the skin to emulate a full thickness skin injury. After that, five different treatments were applied. A first group, in the first group, a commercial product was applied as a positive control. In a second group, adipose derived stem cells were embedded in a scaffold made of agarose. A third group used only stem cells in a saline solution. A fourth group used only the scaffold made of agarose. And finally, the last group used saline solution as a negative control. All the subjects were monitored on a daily basis to assure that the animals had welfare and that the wounds were measured every three days during three weeks. When the wound co closed completely, a biopsy was taken from the animals, the tissue was fixed, and histological analysis was performed. In this graph, we can observe the closing rate for each treatment, considering the size reduction of the wound over time. At a first glance, it appears that the positive control, the darkest blue line, closed slightly slower than the other treatments, and that both adipose-derived stem cell treatments with and without agarose, in this case, cyan and light blue lines, were slightly faster. However, our statistical analysis showed no significant difference among the treatments, with an accuracy of 95%. In this other figure, we can observe the wound healing process directly in the animal model, where we can corroborate that the closing rate was very similar in all the treatments. Granulation tissue covered the wound around day three to five in all the treatments, and complete closure of the injury was found around day 14 to 16. Most differences were found at a histological level that my partner Silvia is going to explain. Regarding the histology analysis, one of the most important observations when analyzing the different treatments is that there are clearly different patterns present. The indicator of parkeratosis and inflammation stands out as one of the most important elements that differentiates the groups, while others are rather characterized by the presence of the scars with a greater amount of extensive collagen in the past. ASC-treated groups presented, presented less inflammation uh, we're talking about less neutrophils and lymphocytes, and, and less parakeratosis compared to the other groups. It also can be noted that scar tissue was more contracted when compared to the other groups. On the other hand, there was a moderate and oriented collagen deposition, the same result that we find in the previous report, and it is demonstrated that ASCs are capable of modulating the inflammation in order, in order to improve the wound healing process. And here we can prove it. On the other hand, regarding parkeratosis, uh, that we all know that is the presence of uh, nuclei cells in the cornified layer, it may be a sign of a chronic wound keratinocyte derived from an accelerated keratinocyte differentiation pathway and the new one epidermis forced to repair. It is important to say that in this case the scalpel resulted to be kind of immunogenic so we think it's not appropriate for this purpose even though the literature supports the, our scalpel as a non-immunogenic. 
To finish the talk, the main conclusions uh, we have reached are The established protocol was effective for its isolation of ASCs even from a very small sample in a low cost way. The cells can keep their stemness in vitro at least during the first three passages, which means that they could be cultured and used as a cell therapy, besides the use of the vascular stromal fraction. The main effect that we have observed is that the ASC applied directly on the skin wound decreases parakeratosis and inflammation. Also, these cells promote vascular, vascularization and a moderate geocollagen deposition and contraction of the wound. And finally, it shows that it could be a potential cell therapy for skin wounds in our country. Now we want to thank our institution for the financial support of this research, as well as the others collaborators from the UCR, uh, Max, Peralta, Max, Max Peralta Hospital, and the students that help us in the routinary task. And thank you for the attention, oh. and if you ever want to contact or know more from our laboratory, don't hesitate to contact us. You can see here the contact information. So thank you very much.